Welcome to a different version of the Mainly Wrestling Show. I'm Jack Milner, joined by the man who designed this, but the Hitman Heart in all his glory, um, Rich Davis. Oh, you know, might know him as Main Event Rich, might know him as other things, but uh, Richard, welcome along. Hey, Jack, thank you very much. It's a pleasure <laughs> to be here. Your shirt looks great, by the way. It's, you know what? Let's, let's give it a little, because I, I love this shirt. Like I took the boy to the park and awesome. I, always generally wearing a wrestling shirt. Bret Hart as a child was a bit blurred. Bret Hart as a boy was my favourite, so... Yeah, it's a bit blurred. Bloody, uh, did, bloody well did, didn't, you t- didn't you say some guy has ordered one to get signed by Bret uh, uh, coming up somewhere? So some gentleman, I will keep his an- anonymity, uh, yes, yeah, said he's going to assign him with the excellence of execution in September and wanted something slightly different... Um, I suppose to have a momentum of it, have a memento. So he said, Can you put this as a print? Of course, again, darling. Uh, it was up in the store that evening. He purchased it, I think, within an hour of being told. And he said, He'll go and get the hitman to sign it at the signing in September. And he'll send us a picture of it once it's been done. So, yeah, your artwork will be in, in front of Bret Hart um, in not so very long, Rich. That, that's pretty cool. I've, that's I've got very one cool. One of um, I call my friend now from Instagram. Very yes, nice. he, he went. He went to a sign in, in the um, yeah. He he got these done for me. What we got? He got tugboat and um, and Magnum T. Yeah. Thank you very much, Josh. Appreciate it. I suppose that would, that would lead us on to my opening question for you, Rich. When when is your era of wrestling? Because I'm guessing you're around the same age as me. I'm 35. I was brought up in probably Mr. Hogan era. Kind of got the early nineties, saw a little bit of Hulk Hogan, Ultimate Warrior, but I for me it was Bret Hart, WrestleMania nine, WrestleMania ten when he beat Yokozuna, and then then you're off and running. But what? Where, how, how did you get into the uh, sports entertainment as Vince was called it? Well, I, I've got like an older uh, half brother, Darren, so I'm pretty sure he must have been into it because it was always around, you know, like all the Hulk stuff and. Um, yeah, and, and, and all the figures, all the Hasbro's, you know what I mean? And they say SummerSlam 92, like that VHS got hammered, you know what I mean? And then at some, at some point, I just lost it. I, I didn't, you know, I didn't, I didn't know where it had gone, you know, basically. And then so when I got back in high school, about 1997, I, I met a guy, Calvin, and uh, he was he was into it and he had these figures and stuff. I couldn't believe that this still existed, you know. Went straight round to his that night, you know, like best friends for, for high school now. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm, I, do you know, I think that's kind of overlooked and it's quite normal in terms of you become a laps fan. So for me, big wrestling fan up until end, middle end of 2001, right? When the invasion, which was shit, by the way. Apologies for my language, you know, aren't there? Yeah. Well, it's, it, that, that's, that's where I dropped out from that period, like the, the invasion and that, you know, it was just all a bit. But like, you know, uh, it was, I was just saying, a bit like boring, wasn't it? You know, it wasn't. It wasn't boring. It was predictable, right? Because Vince isn't it? That, 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 that was it. it was predictable. You knew it was always going to be that way, and they were just pulling your dick. You know what I mean? It was just like fish, the, fishing the old guy that's after the watershed. I mean, but for, so from if I'm going to tell you my fandom, I got involved as a kid, 97, 98, 99, all over it, like. I'm 10, 11, 12, absolutely mad for it. All my money goes on PlayStation games, wrestling figures, you know, I bought the ring, just everything, mm-hmm. you know. But <laughs> then I, I was at, I got back in about 2006 when I was I was off to university and I started selling all my shit on eBay. And I went, oh, yeah, yeah look at this, I'm still into it. I started, then I bought the Bret Hart DVD, then started Googling, oh, my God, he's had a stroke. Oh, this has happened. <laughs> And then yeah. I watched a bit of it. I watched it for 18 months and I got mad into Ring of Honor. I became Ring of Honor's biggest, second biggest seller of merchandise in the UK. Well, not on fact, be- behind their merchandise, um, which I think they've changed their name subsequently. But uh, yeah, I won an award for uh, Enterprise and I ended up going to Sri Lanka as like a business ambassador because of wrestling sales. So 15, yeah. years, f- f- 15 years later, Rich was still doing the same thing. Big round of applause there. Yeah, sounds pretty cool. But, you know, but, but my, but, uh, anyway, watched, I stopped watching in 2008. 
got back again in 2011 when I saw what was punk was happening, and then completely dropped off for seven years. And now I'm probably more immersed than ever. So it's, can you, I mean, if people, someone's watching this who isn't this, who's a fan of you and your designs, but isn't a fan of wrestling, why do people take big chunks away from, is it just need a break? Repeat that last part, please, Jack. Because I've spoke to lots of people and it seems very normal for people to take big breaks away from wrestling. Oh, yeah, three, well, four, well. But, it- it's a bit obnoxious, isn't it? You know, like it's it's it's, it's fun. And it's it's fun when you can get into get into a story or get into a period, you know. Yeah. But then, but then they say there's a period that they've just come out of it, like from like 2019 to now. It has changed a lot, hasn't it? But I, I I was only dipping my toes in then again from from podcasts and things, and and I I, I could see how like bolstered the roster was, and everyone was just like everyone was just called like John. Smith or you know like Paul Jones like there's no proper gimmicks anymore and I, I, you know, just just whatever you know I don't I don't want to say any actual names I don't want to get beaten up you know I know Paul number one Paul Jones great manager <laughs> uh, Jim Crockett in the eighties no but yeah, I'm saying it is not do you how much of the the up to date stuff do you watch now then Rich because I've just published the, your terrific design of Thunder Rosa who was. The AEW Women's Champion last year. Um, how up to date with AEW and WWE are you at present? Um, I'm I'm up to date with. I know what's going on. I don't necessarily watch it every week. I've, I've not got the time or or the patience really. But I, 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 like to, yeah. I like to dip my toe in through social media and, and podcasts and things, you know. So you get to keep up the story. If something's good, you go in and watch it. Like I'm well into Gunther. I think he's great. Like if he has a match, I'll. I'll find a way of watching it, you know. Like to be honest, NXT UK was the first shows I've been to for like oh, yeah. I don't know, for like 10, 15 years. I went both times just to see Gunther at the time, you know. Like fantastic, absolutely love that stuff, you know. Well, so what then, you, I said, what do you make of his new look? Because some people thought <laughs> if he was going to lose the weight, he'd lose his aura, but he seems to have kept all of it and more. Well, yeah, he's, he's transformed himself. I think I think he's gone. Above and beyond, you know, like you can be given these, um, you know, the, the, you can be given these chances by Vince or by the WWE, what whatever it is at the top, and if you don't grab it and make it your own, it's gonna fail in it, and he's absolutely grabbed it and smashed it to pieces, you know. Um, I wish him all the luck. I think he's fantastic. I'm yeah, just going back historically, right? I just think of big guys before who they tried to get to lose weight. Ahmed Johnson was probably. Yeah, one of the one of the biggest guys who they thought was going to be you know the face of the company, they wanted him to get get a bit more polished, lose some weight, wouldn't do. It. The big show got sent to OBW, Mark Henry, um, Gunther's the only one I've seen actually physically transform himself whilst being under there. Yeah. Oh, it's, it's unreal, isn't it? And like you say, he's re- he's really improved on the mic, and he's really really gets the um, he really gets the job, doesn't he? You know he. He understands it and he makes it his own, and he's got a big future. I'm, I'm positive of that. I mean, yeah, he should do. He's, I think he's been a pro for about eighteen years now. So, um, he came through the what Austrian and then moved to Germany very shortly afterwards. So, he knows what he's doing. It's, it's not his first rodeo. In terms of um, AW, how much have you been watching that? What do you make of their? Uh, I suppose their springboard into competition is I suppose. The number two biggest company in the world. Yeah, well, it's it's good, isn't it? Like it's it's good that that there is that that rival to to the WWE and a bit of competition. It adds a bit of spice. I don't think that they've really um, d- d- done anything special, to be honest. You know, but who's, what's my opinion? You know, who goes about that? But they're, they're not doing any, anything that's you know groundbreaking, are they? But um, I believe that collision's quite good. I, I've not had a chance to to um, watch it yet, but I've only heard good things. Is it any I'll, good? I'll lend you my Fight TV login details if you want. You can watch them there. Collisions, collisions. I'm like I'm an old man, right? In terms of, right, I, I don't like all the flippy stuff. I don't like the young bucks, the elite. That I don't like lucha stuff. I don't like the guys queuing up outside and then someone jumps onto about ten of them. And they go down like ten pin bowling. Collision is a bit of a yeah. a throwback to almost a. It's very much a Jim Crockett 
style um, promotion. You know, there's it's it's long matches, it's selling, it's heat, hot to FTR versus um, Juice Robinson and um, Switchblade Jay White. What two weeks ago was phenomenal. It went 58 minutes. I think I remember saying to the missus, like, I'm just going to watch this match and I'm going to come to bed. Did, not knowing what happened in the match. I know it was two out of three falls. And the match, the match went 58 and a half minutes. And, uh, yeah, I think I'm, I'm so excited. I, I don't get excited for many wrestling matches. I am so excited to see Adam Cole and MGF versus FTR tomorrow night. I'm not, I don't think I'll stay live for it because it's two o'clock in the morning here in Jib. But uh, I'll be one of those, as soon as I wake up, try and avoid social media and then for some reason hard that. it's, it's very hard to do you know especially, just... especially with your bread platform <laughs> you just got to literally not log on to twitter or instagram or facebook and just get something up and go okay get the match on unfortunately with, <laughs> with, with an 18 month old that's quite difficult but we will try nonetheless oh yeah but yeah I thought you'd have been all over AW. will you be at Wembley Stadium for all in no, I, I thought I thought about it. Ask the wife if she fancied going. Um, she pulled her face and don't ask the wife. Jesus. Well, I, 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 is she a wrestling fan? No, but no, she came with me to one of the NXT tapings, and she right. just took the pit. Yeah, <laughs> just mocked it, which, which, which is fine. Whatever. Um, but no, it's it's a bit of a big trip. I went. I've been to Wembley twice this year. And, it's a bloody day do, you know. Like a third, that's, third. that's very that's very his first love of Manchester United, not anything wrestling wise or otherwise. Yeah, R- R- wrestling wishes it got to Wembley as much as United. <laughs> it's true. Um, yeah, it's an interesting one. So the the three people who do our podcast, right, John, Lissy, and I, all non UK residents, all flying over for it, and I think. By the looks of it, a lot of people are going to be in the same boat. I think a lot of people have been wanting a, a not necessarily a super show, but a big, big event. We tried to get tickets for Money in the Bank, and it was just ridiculous how much money they were charging. Yeah. Um, but we can, and they know they'll sell out, and it's very good business for them. We got tickets for, I think, 110 quid, good tickets. Um, probably spend more on hotels and flights, but... I'll probably yeah. there from the Thursday or Friday, filming bits and pieces. I've got there's a few plans of the pipeline, Rich. You can't release it yet, but uh, we'll try to see well, it, who we can grab for the week. It's happening, isn't it? You know, it's cool. It's cool that you're going to meet these people that you do your podcast with, you know, and and you know, there's going to be other people doing the same. It's going to meet friends that they've never met, you know. Like it's going to be a, a really cool place for if, if that's what you're into, you know. Like, it's going to be awesome, isn't it? And this the show's by, I think, Defi- I'm on the Saturday, I've got front row tickets. Not by me. Somebody else has sorted it. Just paid them the money. Um, I think Defy and Progress. Well, I don't know who they are. I think they're a UK. I, I've got no I've got no knowledge of oh. the UK wrestling scene. But I know I've got front row tickets for there's a Saturday show. Not the one Will Ospreay's on. And uh, that's unfortunate. Will Ospreay, actually, great fan of the channel. Um, we'll plug a lot of the no context flare meme stuff, as will Dax Harwood. I'll be hoping to try and grab may, it, maybe not of them, but a couple of few of the wrestlers who are over the week for a couple of interviews. So, my idea is to go around with a a camera and a microphone and just see what we can grab. Well, yeah, I've, I've been meaning to draw FTR to be honest. Um, the, 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 they're definitely on my list. Well, look, they they'll share it for you on their socials. They'll plug it. They'll if it's good enough, they'll they'll send it on the pro wrestling tees, and it could be a nice role to check coming your way, Richard. Look, look at look at Hal Haney. He's he's done all right out of it. Oh, he, he's absolute top talent, isn't he? His his illustrations are absolutely beautiful. You know, I, I really really get a buzz out of him. Like what we, I remember probably over the last five ten years, you scroll through Instagram and you would see artists that really like. Wow, you know, and you really catch you. Um, but it, it's only once in a while now, it's not as common. But when you do see someone like Howl's, um, Howl's art, it really does inspire you, you know, it gets you, gets your own creative cogs, uh, moving. What what made you start to, um, I suppose that produce, I suppose, art or wrestling art, I suppose, better because I think yeah. how, how I came across you, Rich, I'm sure, I'm pretty sure you tagged like. Probably wrestling eighties, nineties, right? In yeah, and then it's a case of oh, let's try and work with you, and like these are quite good. I don't mind sharing them. 
Um, there are some people who try to tag everything they do on Instagram. A little little tip: if you want somebody to share your work, don't tag twenty things a day in because you'll just get told to fuck off. No, I'm very conscious of it. Like I hate it when it happens to me, or you know, just like people, ta- you know, I hate hate like fake tags. I'm, I've got loads of blocked words on my comments, you know. What I mean? So, so I'm, I'm 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 able to to muffle most of that noise. Um, but yeah, there's nothing worse than being badgered, isn't there? Just in life in general. Never mind, just just, just life in general. So, how, how long have you been going on it, Rich? Just in terms of, like producing your, I was going to say doodles. I don't want to sound too uh, well, patronising. Has it been a few years? Well, I've, I've been called the Saint Helens Doodle before. You know, but that, right. that's one. Of my, that's one of my monkeys. Um, so well, I've been drawing all, all my life. You know what I mean? It's just something that. Some some kids doing it, you know. Then, and then you, you just kind of, if you enjoy doing it, you kind of stick with it. Um, but the, the the wrestling one came up probably during lockdown. I think it was, you know, just we we, we all needed something to do we, we whilst we were held prisoners in our homes for nearly two years. Hey, I tell you what, and, if, living in Spain, it was brutal. We weren't allowed to go out for a walk. I, I wasn't a registered citizen. I got marshaled straight. And I had four months, like, not leaving the house. It was awful. Yeah. Yeah, I've got, I've got a friend in Barcelona and he, he, he hated it. You know, it, sound, it was shit over here, so we were, we were all in the same boat. But, 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 but anyway, like, it was just, I just started posting some wrestlers. I think I started with a, a Walter drawing you know and it it went down quite well you know and then it kind of grew from there and you said oh a lot better i was i was smashing out a picture a day you know it was it was a lot, a lot, a lot of buzz on it around, around then it was quite fun you know when everyone was at home <laughs> um and it was it was really encouraging i just quite enjoyed it and so i met people like yourself who um helped me make a bit of money out of it you know and share it and you know, just get get out to people. I just want to be so be, be seen by people. I don't really know why why I do it sometimes. But you know, it's not all about money and things. It's just about it's just about creating and sharing and just getting a reaction, really. Yeah, so it's a bit of a I suppose inside baseball. I pestered Rich a few times. He gave me some of these designs. <laughs> We can sell some t-shirts. They said, no, no, Jack, no, I don't want to want t-shirts. No, I'm just happy to be the art. Yeah, I, I don't want to know. I don't want to annoy people. Make some money out of this, you know. Like, no, no one's interested. No, no. Well, I'm asking you for the designs, and I know people who are interested. Oh, fine, go on then. We'll, we'll try and see what we can do. And then I think there was 13 of your wonderful pieces sold last month. I think probably similar. Well, it's been slightly quieter this month, but there is an appetite for people to have, I think, a little bit of nostalgia and, and, and you bring that um, in yeah, your own if, unique if, way. If people are willing to, to, to buy it, you know, it's, I must be doing something right, you know. We, we, we don't go mad, do we? $20 for a T-shirt. It's not exactly um, no, well, anything well, daft at this you know, obviously, we're only making a fraction of that. You know, like to, to, to be absolutely honest, like the manufacturer, the printer, make it. Uh, unfortunately, enough it's enough it's going to the wrestlers, but you know, uh, it's art. It's all it's very art. limited. Exactly, it's yeah. almost it's a homage. It's not using their image or likeness, as my lawyers um, well instruct no, their exactly. representatives. No, n- n- nothing to be worried about. Um, I, I just, I just like to do it. You know, it's it's fun. I've yet to see somebody in my shirts, but maybe when you go down to Wembley, maybe you can keep your sharp eye out. That's right. Uh, yeah. If we can spot, if we can spot a few, that'd be amazing. Are you? Have you been surprised by any um, requests so far? Because I'm pretty sure you've. Have you? I don't think the Brett one was, but there's a couple, right? Where you've been, somebody said, "Can you do this specific design, or can you do this type of?" this event, whether it be like WrestleMania 9 or WrestleMania 14 or is there anything? Well, that... n- n- not a surprise. Like, I- I'm-, I'm always happy to-, to-, to try anything really, you know, it's just th- 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 there's no shocks in my heart. Right. <laughs> I don't yet. know what I mean. I don't even know what I mean, Jack. Yeah. No, I wouldn't say I've been surprised. I, I-, I quite enjoy it. I-, I quite enjoy, I-, I did like an ECW thing a few years ago for somebody, you know, and just getting to draw them people you know, like like Shane Douglas and Mike Awesome, you know, just 
it, it was just, I really enjoyed that project. I think I got like 10 or 15 done, you know, and I think I got some good likenesses in there. Um, they're all on my Instagram, which is a main underscore event underscore rich. Um, they're all on there if you scroll back for far enough. And likewise, if you want the de- the pictures or the the f- probably broader portfolio, facebook.com forward slash main event rich. And you can buy any of these designs that I've mentioned, Bret Hart or otherwise, on etsy.com slash store slash main event rich. That was set up last month. Um, is there anyone you've not been able to do? Because I've I've kind of picked up I've picked a couple of yours before, and I thought like, I'm not sure they're right. I think there's an Arn and, Arn and Tully because Tully Blanchard is is difficult because his head well, his head and his hair change his shape through yeah. like eighty five through eighty nine. It's it's all about finding a good reference picture, you know. Like you say, the the, the Arn and Tully ones, it was quite hard to. To get some clear images because they were you're know, taking on film and and you base them you base them on that WWF run where you do get better shots and better imagery because WWF were well, better with their marketing whereas it, they're it, more it, remembered for their eighty seven eighty eight uh, stuff in the Horseman yeah but you can always adjust that you can add the mullet or you know what I mean you can change the belt or you know what I mean you can ch- change the color of the hair or whatever else you know it's, that's hair it, for any non Lancastrians out there yeah. The, I don't know how else to say it, you know. But my, my wife Change the colour of the... Have we got subtitles? I'd love anyone outside of um, the Pennines trying to transcribe this Well, stuff. to be honest, there's only going to be two people watching it. Us two in the locker room, you know. Anyone, any, well, any of the people who are subscribed and are watching this wonderful um, insight into the workings of Rich Davis... Yeah. Um, what, is that a smoking skull belt behind you? Is that a cushion? Is there any more? Do you want to talk us through some of the mementos? I'd, some of the I'd, I'd like to, but I'm not the kex on, so I can't. I can't really stand up. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, that, just... Who's the guy in the background? Is is that the is that 2003 Rock? Top shelf, what? middle. Top shelf, middle. Yeah. Top shelf, genius. There. Who's that? <clears throat> This one. I, I don't want to see your ass, don't worry. Yeah, who's that? That's Vince McMahon. That's oh, wow. Vince McMahon. Right. Uh, I'm gone. Oh, Jesus Christ. We'll, we'll edit this out, don't worry. I think this is the best bit. Right. So we, we, we've... It's, it's good for your Instagram account, this pal, don't worry. It's all, it's all too fragile, Jack. I don't want to touch you. Let's leave it alone, it's okay. Yeah, but there is some pretty cool stuff in there. That that'd probably make a video on its own. Uh, I, I I don't think I'd use that this podcast that we've done so far. To be honest, you don't uh, think I, 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 I don't think we. I don't think that this footage is very good. To be honest, I uh, think I'll, we could probably. I think I'll we be, could probably I'll, do it again. I'll be editing it. Yeah, you've had a few pints there, haven't you? No, well, I've not. To be honest, I'm only on my second, my second candy. Really, you look you look knackered. You've been a long I'm, way. I'm knackered. Uh, yeah, it's your bedtime. Yeah, it's pretty well past my bedtime. It's half twelve. Um, Look at me, I'm sprightly. Sprite, yeah. sprightly young man. Um, well, he said, "I'd like a second popper." Well, but... look, they, they, yeah. they, they want more content as possible, as much content as possible. For me, it, as long as I've got something, you've seen all my so, you've seen all like the pages I run, right? Mm. They do well because I'm able to edit them and produce the right clip with the right caption to drive engagement. That's in yeah. the words of Roy Keane, that's my job. That's my so, job, yeah. Well if you if you <laughs> I can get a few gems. If you can get something without that half an hour, um that that'll be smashing. Yeah, all they all they want is some background of like, oh what what have you designed it? Where's your inspiration? What got you into wrestling? Uh, yeah. Blah, blah, blah. I'm trying to work out. Who else is that? What are you looking at? I'm trying to work out in the um, the ring. Oh, this ring here? That ring there. Yeah, so it's, it's, it's the rock. I'll tell you what, this might be a cool story. Ooh. There you go. Talk away. Oh, yeah. So that, that's one of the retros. 
but this one, I can't remember what the company's called. I've still got the box upstairs. Um, with the with the famous classic eagle belt, still waiting yeah. for you to do that collection. By the way, yeah, we'll we'll, we'll we will get there. I've got a good triple H somewhere. Rock Triple uh, H, the... Stone Cold, uh, T- Taker, and Kane. Kane won it in ninety eight, didn't it? Yeah, yeah. we get mankind in there too. Uh, oh God, it's got, oh, got a cobweb there. We can add Kurt, An- Kurt Angle and do seven there. Oh, but yeah. Big Show as well, eight. Big Show. Mm. See, see that? Rock shades. Just how, how, how like neat they are. I don't know if you if you know much about figures, but like I used to collect know. them. I used to be obsessed with them when I was well, 10, 11, 10, 11, 11, 12, 13, and then and then I kind of um, grew up. Like so. that that fits so well. And the, the, so that this figure is it's like a proper licensed thing, um, but it was designed by this guy Brian Beatty. Um, he's he's got an Instagram creation crib, um, but like in like the early two thousands, he was on the the, the uh, wrestling figs forums and stuff. He was like a customizer called Beatty, and even back then, like his stuff was shit hot, like like uh, well beyond anywhere else, like amazing, like. Um, but he, I found out that he. Like eventually, you know, he become a toy designer. My like so this is like an official beta. Like even back, even back then, these are sell for like five hundred dollars and stuff. You know, these custom figures. It was, it was unbelievable. I, I wish he had more pictures of his old work. Um, but yeah. So what's what's his art again? If people, anyone wants to try and do you um, creation crib, but he, he doesn't post much wrestling stuff. But there are there are a few uh, bits on there. Like the like, he can ECW set, right? RVD, I think, and the brick wall and stuff. But that that was just like a one-off custom piece. But he eventually like auctioned it off, and I think I think he made a good packet on it. But check check him out, absolutely talented, talented guy. I think he's in in America somewhere. I don't know where. That's but, a, yeah, so a that, creation crib. On that topic, Rich, what? How did you decide on your uh, your new rebranding? Because people may have stumbled upon you originally as Illustrations by Rich, which yeah. Well, in the words of LA Knight, cut yeah. cut my music. It was even cut, you, cut you, you even you even got it wrong there. It was Illustration by Rich, which you know, didn't make font. any sense, and that's why probably people were trying to tag you, like me. And no, but, just... but it does it does make sense if you understand English. Um, but so it's, it's rather than illustrations, like here's my illustration. It was like illustration, like the art of illustration by Rich. But it, it's people, especially um, people from different um, North American countries, really struggled. With North American countries, <laughs> America. Yeah, Canadians are fine. <laughs> I'm more teasing. Uh, yeah, the, 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 they struggle to, to read it. Like so, some somebody said, I, I always thought it was an illustration, bitch. <laughs> uh, so um, yeah, I thought I thought it was time. I, I consulted with um, one of my friends, smart guy, does a bit of marketing, and uh, t- t- together we we. Well, I, I think I think I might have had the first shout of main event, Rich. I think I think it might. It have was been you. I, I went through. I, you know, I went through and I'd look at our our old messages, and you come up with a couple of ones which are horrible first. And then, yeah. Well, and then you said, "What do you think about main event, Rich?" Went. Well, yeah. Okay, I like that. Yeah, it, it works. Kind of work, doesn't it? It's got a bit of like there, there is a bit of arrogance to it, but like, I hope people don't see it as that because I'm, I'm I'm a very humble person. I'm not I'm not about bragging. Just needed a catchy name, you know, that that's sem, semi semi wrestling related, you know. Um, and I, I think I think we, we we hit the nail on the head. I think it's pretty cool. Yeah, you know, the people who will be subscribing to you on locker room, they will be main eventers. So yeah, yeah it, it coincides become, very well. Eventer today. Don't be a mid carder, a main eventer. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So it, it could be pretty cool. Like, who, who knows where it's going to lead? Um, but it, it, w- why not try things? I, I'm, 
I, I always like that book, Yes Man. You know, like I always, I always thought that was a, a good concept of life. You know, like um, just say yes and things can happen, can't they? It's it's funny how some things were like. I I'm kind of similar to you. I I only got really involved in the social side because I was made redundant during COVID. I used to be a head of sponsorship for a big gaming company, and I'd be travelling back and forth the UK. And I only started. I started Max and Paddy quotes as a bit of a inside joke because there was only three Northerners in the office, and we'd say his quotes <laughs> to each other. And then I've we've come back pissed on a night after a night out. Watching, watching the DVD, I said, I'd love to. Oh, so many great quotes, you know. The show, someone should be putting them. Why do you get a Twitter account and start putting them down? Yeah, we'll do that. And if you, if you go out to the start, I'd post like once every six, eight weeks. And then mm-hmm. as I was traveling more for work, bored, stuck in airports or on trains, did that, expanded, added Only Fools and Horses in 2017. And then now I've got, I think, 20-odd accounts and about two and a half million followers. So it's it's like, fu- it's funny how things work out. I've always wondered about, about the, those accounts that you've had. Because obviously I knew about them before before you. Like They're a bit famous, aren't they? Like, even if, even, you know, if they are like friends who obviously don't know you of mine, obviously know all about those, you know, Max and Paddy and all the fools and whatever else. Because, you know, it is a bit of a... It's in, it's in the, the zeitgeist, isn't it? You know, now it's just part of da- the daily life of Twitter, like no context, insert name here. It's in the, yeah. oh, you call it like the social media northern consciousness of a certain, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's in everyone's timeline, you know. If, if like, see, obviously, your phone listens to you, like, honestly, my phone is reading my thoughts on some things as well, which is, you see, I won't even get into that now, but. It's just like the, the the way social media works. It just it just knows what to put in there, doesn't it? That algorithm, you know, the creepy bastards. We were, uh, when, uh, and, and you, you, you you managed to break into that for for, um, for <laughs> Northwest you know, England. When we were in, uh, we took the boys to the park after nursery today, and then a uh, friend of a you know friend of a friend, family friend was there, some nine year old at some on his summer camp thing. He came across. I went, oh yeah, is that it? and Jack, Jack and his wife, and she went, not married, eight and a half years. She doesn't produce a ring. Uh-huh. Within half an hour, she was getting ads on Instagram for engagement rings. Really? <laughs> I think it was, wow. it was even quicker, but even sooner than that. So you think yeah, they are listening to everything? I know. Fuck off. <laughs> That's um, what I said. You got to keep it in this. But you are right about the maximum. So I was at some charity quiz for Gibraltar cricket on Saturday, and some guy, guy from Hull, I think he's called Liam. He had his quizzes. His quiz team's name was Manga and Steel because the Indian lads on their team who who's there working. I think it's called Manga. I think it's called Manga, whatever it's called. And they all like Max and Paddy, and they he had no idea what it was, but it was funny. And I said, "Is that?" Is that because of Magnet and Steel? The Max and Paddy. Oh yeah, we're big fans. I went. You know that's me. What are you talking <laughs> about, Jack? Did you follow it on Twitter? Yeah, yeah. That's me. Fuck off, you don't. And I said, I just got my phone out. I said, do you want me to put a clip out? I said, oh no way, that's amazing. <laughs> so that, that's what I was gonna. That's what I was gonna ask you. Yeah, like, were all all them accounts now, like the original clips, like the flow clips that what. what are you clipping them yourself? I edit them all personally. Yeah, this is 2020 wow. when I was again a lot of time off work, quite a little bit depressed just because the world's ending right now and I'm not allowed to leave the house. So my sleep pattern was I was awake from 12 at midday, and I'd the missus goes to bed about half eleven, and I stay at working all night till about five or six in the morning, and I, I found out I was very productive at that time. But everything's in like folders now. I've got two and a half thousand Ric Flair clips. If you tell me I need something Ric Flair's entrance, I've probably got fifty different versions. I've got forty yeah. different versions of him wooing. And same with like <laughs> Max and Paddy, I've got all these clips, whether it be if it's a specific scene, like the one with Sammy Snake, right? And the bouncy castle. I've got the full scene, I've got twenty, thirty second versions, and then I've got multiple four or five second versions of that. If I need something quick to go with a certain story on, on 
Twitter, it's there and I can jump on it. So all the hard bit's done now because all the content's there. A bit like you with your yeah. designs, right? If if something topical has happened based on a Thunder Rosa or a Ron Simmons or a Adam Cole yeah. or a Heart Foundation, you can whip um, an yeah. image that you've already made and go, oh, great to see that so-and-so is going in the Hall of Fame, blah, 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 follow some more. Yeah, yeah. I, I do have a vast... I must have done at least 500 wrestlers now. Like I, for, for the first 250 or so, I used to... Every time I did 30, I'd put them in a, a Royal Rumble situation, make an image of that. And so I'd just give up after a while. And it, it, just, it just becomes too much work. So I've completely lost count. So I've done so many different versions of the same person or they might have done one version of... I say I've only done one Terry Funk. I did like a like a ninety eight Terry Funk. I really want to do an NWA Terry Funk. That's on my list. Funk, seventy six NWA World Champion, ninety seven yeah. ECW Champion. We will work on that for a next theme on our locker room store. But until then, he's been Rich Davies. I've been Jack Miller. Follow him at, at main underscore event rich on Twitter and Instagram at main event rich on Facebook and Etsy. And we will see you both. Both views. My mum is his wife very soon. Ta-da!